All right, guys, this is Alex C. with TFP TV. Today I've got a really cool gun for you. That's going to be a Daewoo K1A1. A lot of people call it Korea's AR-15 because it fires 5.56. Controls are laid out very similarly, and it's direct impingement, just like one. So we're going to do some shooting with it today and see what Korean steel has to offer in the way of shooting. Not a bad gun, I really like this thing. Alright guys, you might notice a familiar face next to me. I've got our buddy and TFB rider Miles all the way from Indiana to shoot this fine K1. Now, have you shot a K1 before? I have not. This is the first time I'm shooting it. I'm um, pretty impressed so far by it. Um, let's see how it goes. Now, you have a lot of experience with the M16 platform. Yes, um, I'm a Marine Infantryman for four years, currently in the reserves. Um, it has a lot of similar stuff to it. A lot of the controls, magazine release, safety in a similar position, but not the same thing. If you know, just looking at it now, if you notice the kind of the lug nuts on how the handguard fits into place is similar. The gas system is similar. Front side adjustment is similar. Sling swivels, obviously that takes Stanag magazines, um, but it's a lot shorter than an M16, more of an M4 size carbine right here, and you can actually the buttstock goes all the way in, right about there. So pretty compact as it is. Um, it's pretty impressive that their entire army has the ability to go compact with this. Instead of we've got half and half M16s, M4s, their entire military has the ability to go compact. More for that uh, working in vehicles, urban environments, just getting it short and small. Absolutely. Even on the K2, they've got a folding stock as well. So uh, the Daewoo uh, guns are, are very well equipped in the way of compact compactness. Um, why don't you take a couple shots on the target and uh, give us a feel for how it shoots? Sure, sure. Um, it's jumping around a lot. Overall, it's like, it's all right, but I feel like it's jumping around a lot, a lot less weight than an M16. My target's moving all over the place. But other than that, it's very, very controllable. I was able to get back on target a lot quicker. Magazines, magazine retention, magazine release, same exact thing deal. Um, the bolt release right here, just like an M16 on the same side. It seems like they went just as simple as possible and they produce a pretty good product as it is. And we'd obviously have to get further out to see how much it would go, maybe 300 meters plus. Right here, we've only got about 15 meters, 20 meters to work with. But overall, I like how the bolt is tilted upward instead of straight to the side. We can manipulate it a lot easier by just tilting the fire in here and doing something like that to get it working. Um, yeah, pretty good so far. I like how on an M16, the magazine well usually goes probably about up to there on the magazine. But with the K1, it only ends right about here. That makes it certain the magazine, you're dealing with a lot less space and a lot less of a channel to get this all up in there. So magazine reloads a little bit easier because you have to go literally from here to there to insert it instead of with an M16 where you're going from something like here to all the way up there almost. Um, also like how the sights, we've got a small combat sight, 0 to 300, and then we've got a large battle sight that goes uh, opposite. The large battle sight will be 0 to 3, and then the smaller one will be beyond that, for distances beyond that. It doesn't have, it has windage adjustments, similar to an A1 upper, but elevation, that's all we got back here. And similar adjustments up there as an A1 as well. And yeah, also, 
it seems that the barrel, since it's a lot shorter, it seems to get a lot hotter up here than an A2 handguard or an A4 handguard would get hotter or an M4 handguard, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah. Hey, we're at 100 meters taking some shots with the K1. Let's see how it goes. That's good enough. Alright, so we just shot at 100. Did pretty good so far. We were having a bit of trouble finding where it was hitting, but once we found out, aim for the upper right shoulder on this particular K1, absolutely perfect. We took about 19 shots. Every single shot hit the steel. Pretty good so far. Something I really do like about it is the trigger reset. It has a very clunky reset, so it's bang and then clunk as the trigger goes forward. That definitely aids a lot in making sure your marksmanship's on par, making sure you're hitting that good reset every time. All right guys, so we shot the Daewoo K1A1 quite a lot today, and I gotta say, I really like this gun. I think it was pretty good. Operator controls, just the same as an AR-15 platform, apart from the charging handle on the opposite side, but that's easily workable. It's kind of a mix between AK and AR, and that you've got it over here, mm -hmm. pretty useful. Yeah, um, it was very accurate. We had some good luck. Uh, Miles, you had 19 out of 19 shots at 100 yards or 100 meters. So I that was, was yeah, I was surprised. First time on the gun at 100, and uh, just figured out the good aiming sweet spot. Uh, we did upper right shoulder for that, and worked out pretty well. It's a really good gun, guys. It was reliable. Just like we said, if you like AR-15s, I think you'll really like these. Um, something Miles hit on was the collapsible stock is awesome. I mean, it makes it very compact for getting in and out of a vehicle if you're going to be doing that. Um, all in all. A really great gun. The Koreans did a great job with this gun. I'm glad that they sent us some. I wish they could still do that. Um, anyways, Miles, I think you, yeah, you had pretty much the same opinion. Um, all in all, a really nice gun that the Koreans uh, brought forth to the table. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. Um, anyways, guys, I'd like to thank one of our sponsors, Ventura Munitions, for providing the ammunition for this test. And we've got Grizzly targets, which we're using today. Great steel. Uh, held up pretty good. Yeah, um, abso absolutely, guys. Those targets are some of the toughest on the market. Um, Despite Miles trying to pulverize it into dust, it's still there. Yeah, indeed <laughs> it is. So uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching TFP TV. Maybe drop a comment, hit the subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. Until next time, this is Alex and Miles. See you later.